Hello, everyone. My name is Holly Dinany, and I am with Family Partners of Morris and Sussex County, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our Lunch and Learn program. Today's topic is on a very important organization in our community that provides great services for uh, families with children with special needs. Uh, it's called the Association for Special Children and Families. And um, it's one of these, I feel in this field, there are so many organizations out there that do really wonderful things, but we don't always know exactly who they are or how to contact them. So we're very lucky because on today's Lunch and Learn, uh, which you know, our Lunch and Learn program is to bring an expert to the table for lunch, to, to talk with us and really explain um, a concept or a program to us. And today's guest is Julie Rykon who is the co-director and peer consultant at the Association for Special Children and Families. And uh, before the program started, Julie, Julie told me she's only been doing this for 23 years, so she's not really sure she has a lot to offer. Uh, I, of course, I say that tongue in cheek. Uh, fortunately, um, Julie has done, uh, done this kind of work for a long time because it's meaningful to her and she sees, I know Julie, the impact on a daily basis that you have uh, with family. So we are grateful for you to come and speak with us today about your organization and your programs. And I'm just going to remind our listeners that we are recording this uh, presentation and we will make it available to you following. We will also make it available on our YouTube channel and uh, we will be following up with some resources. Uh, in addition, we will email some things out afterwards. So Julie, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to you and we're going to have, this is going to be a little bit of a conversation. So I'm going to remind folks that are on the call. If you have a question, you can either drop it in the chat or come off mute. Uh, Julie would like this to be conversational. It's like we're a couple of friends sitting at a lunch table, sharing some helpful information. So this program is for you. If you are here because you have a question for yourself or a question for um, how you can serve the families that you work with, please don't be shy. We are happy that you're here. And Julie Rykon, take it away. Thank you, Holly. Um, my name is Julie Rykon, and I am a parent consultant and co-director at the Association for Special Children and Families. We don't have a physical office right now, but um, we have. We were located in Hewitt, which is in Passaic County, um, and I've been involved many years with Family Partners. Um, which is such a fantastic organization. So um, it's th this journey is really very interesting because we are all on a journey working with our kids. It doesn't matter what their diagnosis is, whether it's a mental health issue, a medical issue, we're here to support each other. One of the things that ASCF does not do is we do not provide legal or medical advice. We do provide guidance. And with all of the experiences that I have had over the years and my interest in disabilities is I do a lot of research. If I'm unsure of what the child's disability might be. So I do that research. We have even though we're virtual, we have two parent consultants who are bilingual. Um, our social worker just retired. So we will be getting another social worker on board. Um, we are funded through, um, through a federal grant, which we apply for every five years. So we're just finishing up our fifth year of a federal grant and we've applied for another five years. We're what is known as a community parent resource center. And if you have family and friends that live in different states, each state has a community parent resource center. We're the smaller version of an organization like SPAN who covers the whole state. And how we got involved was because we were, we were receiving phone calls from families from different counties besides Passaic County. So when we applied for the federal grant, we, um, we targeted in the grant specific counties from Morris and Sussex. Now, when we sent this new grant in, um, we found some other counties that needed assistance that we were receiving phone calls and emails from. So we expanded our realm of service. Due to being virtual, we are able to assist more families through this virtual medium. 
We are able to attend meetings with families. Um, we don't tell you what to do. We don't represent you, but we give you the guidance that you may need to have successful outcomes for your child in the edu special education process to give you, you know, guidance and support. And um, it's, we've been doing, this, this agency has been around for well over 40 years. So I dropped into this agency in 1997 when I found out that my son, who's now 37, was on the autism spectrum. And I had people I met along the way who gave me bits and pieces about you know, school, school issues and what I can do. And it was different back in 1997. The children that are going through special ed right now have a lot more advantage than my son did. So um, that's why we keep plugging along with this. And I joined this organization when I left my full-time job um, because I needed more time to spend learning about autism. And it led into meeting people from the Association for Special Children and Families, um, attending meetings, attending support groups, learning. And to this day, we, um, we I always say that we're, that we're small but mighty. There's an excellent poem, and it is called Welcome to Holland, and it's written by Emily Pearl Kingsley, and this is about the journey that we take when we have kids with special needs, kids with mental health issues. Um, this is our journey. It's not what we anticipated, and once you are on this journey, do give yourself time to grieve for what you thought might be, but what has happened is through all these years, this journey has led me to absolutely wonderful individuals that I've met, organizations that have been involved in our life. Um, so it's, it's saying, instead of saying, why me? Well, none of us know what's going to happen when we decide to have kids. So this Welcome to Holland is talking about a journey where you think you're going to, but you end up somewhere else. And that's how it is with our kids, and it's lifelong. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my son. I won't bore you with all the details, but he is 37 years old. Intellectually, he's about eight years old. He's a lot of fun. He did not start speaking until he was five. I did not know about all these different programs and services. A lot of them, such as family partners, did not exist when we were going through this journey. Perform care didn't exist. Everything was under the Division of Developmental Disabilities. A lot has changed. Services are much better. Well, now that he's in the adult realm and during this pandemic, he had been attending um, an adult day program. We knew he couldn't work. We tried. It was unsuccessful because he couldn't follow instructions. Through the years he went to this adult day program, they did try to get him to work, but he liked being out and about and being social and eating out and having fun. When the pandemic came about, his program didn't know that they were supposed to close. So I kept him home. I contacted, he has a support coordination agency. I contacted his case manager and we brought people into the house within days. All of these wonderful people came from different agencies. They, you know, I give them a brief rundown about his likes, um, what they can and can't do. And so through, the, through this last year, He's been home with support. He has someone coming into the home every single day. So again, these individuals, the um, daily support person, the DSP, has become like family to us too. I look at the way that they talk to him, how they treat him, how they take him out, and there's there are no complaints. We've had a couple glitches along the way, but we've worked those glitches out. 
So he will remain in this um, program at home with supports um, until things might change again. So this was one of the agencies that came about through the changes from DDD. There are a lot of support coordination agencies. However, we were very fortunate that his DDD case manager back then recommended and did the paperwork for him to be serviced through the specific support coordination agency. And we've been with them for many, many years. So his journey also led to him wanting to learn to read about five years ago because he was frustrated. So in this journey, we were, um, we were given a, a tutor for three hours a week who has taught him to print, not very well, but to read. And he can read maybe at about a second grade level. And that's what I want to see for your kids is that they don't fall that far behind is that they are receiving the services, their educational services that they are supposed to receive. So he reads with the DSP workers, he prints, um, he still cannot do money, but we try to do anything that makes him happy. We have musical instruments, we have some of the DSP workers that are excellent at singing, excellent at video cameras, computers. So we are very lucky. So this is just a minuscule amount of information that's out in this realm called New Jersey. Um, it, it, well, I'm originally from Ohio. So, you know, I try to find out what other states have. Um, but New Jersey has some of the best services and some very caring people along the way, which you will of course find at Family Partners too. And excuse me one minute. I'm um, busy, bye. Busy. That's Franklin. You, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter that I was, I told him I was going to be busy. So he's, <laughs> he's a happy-go-lucky young man. Um, he is challenging. Um, so, it, this journey, this journey, if you keep your eyes open, if you ask questions, Holly and I were talking earlier, as I said, I used to be a surface person. I'd look at the information given to me, but I've learned how to dig deeper to ask questions. I never questioned authority. I didn't question anything. I figured that the school district, the child study team were the experts. Well, as I found out in this journey is they don't share information. So I said, I'm opening my big mouth and I am going to share information and I still do to this day. So what we can do at the association is we can guide you in the evaluation process. There are ways around if the school district says, no, your child's passing, don't worry about it. We can help you navigate that process. We can also help you navigate the um, IEP process and the IEP is the individual education plan. We can help that by reviewing the IEP. And a lot of times we find in the IEP three things. The first is that as we look through the document, we're looking for your child's name to make sure that's your child's IEP. Yeah, um, there were a lot of different names in IEPs, and we would ask the parents to check to make sure that they needed to go back to the case manager and say, is this actually my child's IEP? It has a different child's name in it. He, my child is a female, and this says that he is getting services. The next part is, and this is the most important, is parental concerns are supposed to be listed in that IEP, what your educational behavioral concerns are for your child that will impact the education. So if they tell you that your child that your child is an angel in school, but yet your child is coming home and jumping all over the couch and the beds and throwing and ripping things, it's an issue because then your child can't you know, your child is having um, behavioral issues. Maybe it's a way of letting off their frustration for holding it in all day. 
So there are many steps along this process too. Um, we have, um, we also have worked with families who, who um, had a hard time understanding the English language, that they were from another country. And through this journey is we were able to um, mention to the parent that they need to ask for a translator. Parents are allowed to have their IEPs and all information in their native language. They are allowed at public expense, that means school expense, to ask the school to, trans, to hire a translator, not a teacher who might speak Spanish, but to hire a, a, a translator who can interpret the information for parents. A lot of people don't know that, but it is the school's responsibility to make sure that the parent understands and can participate in that process. The other piece is there's a lot of open-endedness in the IEPs and the strengths of your child. Always look for what's positive. If they like to play a musical instrument and that gives them comfort, that should be part of the strength. If your child's a whiz in math, that should be listed in the IEP. If your child wants to be a rocket scientist, how is that school go district going to help your child to become a rocket scientist? So our kids with special needs of various kinds, they all have strengths and they all have weaknesses. And we wanna concentrate on the strengths. If there are issues at home, besides going through Perform Care, which provides services to the children and family partners or FSO, the family support organization, provides assistance to the parents, is if it's impacting your child's education, that's when the school district may need to be involved in issues at home. If your child is school avoidant, instead of taking you to truancy court, this is one of the questions you might say is, are you, Mr. Smith, are you planning on coming over today to help get my child to school? Sometimes at the meetings, the district will come with the whole team of people and it's intimidating and they talk too fast and they talk over you or they talk under you or they're sharing papers. Well, you as the parent, parents, guardian, legal guardian, um, adoptive parent, foster parent, you are part of the IEP team. And what you have to say regarding your child's education is very important. One of the tactics that we've learned now is to ask open-ended questions, such as how are we going to help my son Randolph with learning math? An open-ended question means that the district needs to respond because all those people in that meet, IEP meeting are really not supposed to be responding to you. And, you know, it's, it's not using anger, it's using questions to ask them to respond to you. If Mr. Johnson is the principal and he's in the IEP meeting, you have the right to say, oh, Mr. Johnson, welcome. So you're part of our IEP meeting now and you'll be coming for all the IEP meetings. Mr. Johnson's function is to make sure that the teachers don't speak out of turn about what your child needs. And I've been in meetings where teachers have spoken up for the child and they don't care that there's some type of retaliation because they're looking out for the child's needs. And this is years and years ago and the teachers are really told not to. But when you ask an open-ended question, they need to respond. One of, one of the other things that we do is we are able to go to in-person IEP meetings, Zoom meetings. We can ask questions. We're not representing the parent, but we can ask questions. So one of the parents I've been working for many years with had a meeting recently and because I wasn't there, not saying that I'm perfect, there's a lot I don't know. Um, every, every parent and family that I meet, um, teaches me new things. So 
one of the parents didn't have me at this meeting that I've been going to for years. And the district pulled the wool over her eyes. And as soon as she sent me the notice, I saw what was missing in that written notice. So um, I had her contact. The state of New Jersey has ombudsmen. They're really women, but ombudsmen for various situations. So the state of New Jersey has a special education ombudsman. And her name is Cynthia uh, Sainden. And you can find this information uh, if you type into a search engine, NJOSCP, which stands for New Jersey Office of Special Education, it leads you to a search engine called State of New Jersey Special Education. Cynthia's name is listed on that homepage for special education. And you can contact her. Um, if you're unsure of something, because she she's not representing the parents, she knows the law. And so this parent contacted Cynthia, and Cynthia stated that the district, that it's, that there was nothing that the parent could really do. So she has to abide by what the district agreed to in, you know, uh, for her child schooling for for the summertime. So, but had I been invited to the meeting, I would have picked picked up on it. And sometimes, you know, I just don't pick up on things. I think about it after a while, you know, I'll contact the parent and say, you know what, you might want to send an email to the case manager um, because I didn't understand or we didn't understand X, Y, and Z. So ask the case manager to clarify in writing. So that leads me to the next topic. You can have a wonderful conversation with your child's case manager. Wonderful. I mean, schools don't really open up to, to the parents anymore, but you could say, Oh, hi, Mrs. Smith. Hey, listen, I need to talk to you about um, more speech for, for my son, Johnny. And the case manager, Mrs. Wild, can say, okay, I'll take care of it. Weeks go by and you don't hear from Mrs. Wild. You don't have an IEP meeting. You don't have any kind of a written notice. And you contact Mrs. Wild. And she says, well, Mrs. Smith, I don't remember us ever having that conversation. So, Mrs. Smith is asked to put it in writing via an email, and then the district is supposed to respond. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. So, let's say Mrs. Wild sends an email back, oh, I'll look into it. Nothing happens. You as a parent can, ca can call an IEP meeting at any time. Special services does not close in the summer. If evaluations need to be done, they have summer staff that, that specifically is for summertime. And they can also contact every county has educational commissions. So they can, they can contact the educational commissions to come and do specific evaluations. So you can write back to Mrs. Wild and say, Mrs. Wild, did you check with the, the Cuyahoga County Educational Commission to see if they can do the evaluations? Well, of course, you're going to throw Mrs. Wild off because you're not supposed to know that information, even though it is public information. So putting your requests in writing, if you receive a phone call from your case manager, follow it up in writing. Oh, Mrs. Wild, it was talk great talking to you today. I see improvements with uh, Johnny, and um, you know, I think the new services, the new speech is helping him. Everything needs to be in writing. The one thing that I noticed after all these years is that. If you send an email to the case manager, to the teacher, and they respond to you, start a new email. Because what happens is the whole content 
gets lost if you keep adding more to the same email. Um, one year I worked with a parent, a wonderful, wonderful person, but her emails were just so long as you didn't know where the beginning and where the end and what the issue was. So please, it's just better to start a new email, know how to spell your case manager's name or your director of special services or your principal or your superintendent, spell their names correctly because you want the same respect that they spell your name and your child's name correctly too. Um, are there any questions so far? Feel free to pop off mute, but I just I, I want to say a couple things. One thing, Julie, I'm going to circle back to your uh, Welcome to Holland poem. That is one of my favorites, and I'm going to I am going to print it out and, and send it to everybody on this call because it really is. I think the gist of the poem is that you're planning to go to Italy. I think so. You've you've packed everything accordingly to go to yeah. Italy, and you've picked out restaurants. Is it Italy? It's someplace you think you're going, and of course, when the plane lands and you get off. You ain't in Italy, <laughs> right? Welcome to Holland, right? So, yes. um, uh, okay, I, I said someone said they would appreciate seeing the poem, but the, the point of the poem, and I love that you brought it up, Julie, is that it's all of us have lives sometimes that are not what we expected. And instead of pining for what we thought might've been, it's it's it behooves us all to try to take advantage of where we are and accepting where we are. So it's a beautiful analogy, especially with um, especially with those of us who have special needs children. So I will send that out to everyone. No worries. So thank you for bringing that up, Julie. Um, and someone else uh, gave you a shout out when you were talking about the four o'clock difficulties with uh, with children, the the witching hour, right? Of four o'clock. I think uh, um, Candace. I think said she could relate to that. So um, I, I wanted to share that. Um, but I'm hearing you say, and folks, feel free to hop off if you want to join the conversation. I'm hearing you say that it's so very important to follow everything up in writing. Correct. But I'm also hearing you say, which I really like and I want to underscore, is that there's no reason to be angry or frustrated or you want, you're recommending respect, you're recommending making sure we know how to spell everybody's name. You're recommending that we play nice in the sandbox. Thank you for your time and for following up on X, Y, and Z. Um, because I think, um, I know I, I was talking with, I think I might've shared with you before the call started, I was talking with a parent yesterday who, it's interesting how you described, I, I like to think that the schools aren't evil, but I, I do think there's a, a certain amount of, um, when they think parents don't know what their options are, there's some information that might be left out. Correct. That's not helpful to the parent. And I spoke to a parent yesterday, and I'm going to share this just because I think for purposes of the conversation, it's really helpful. The parent was told, don't worry about your child's IEP. Let's deal with it in August. There's nothing we can do now. You know, and again, we understand schools are coming out of COVID. We understand there's a lot going on, but I'm hearing you say you can always pursue and should always pursue and should always ask questions. And if you're not getting answers where you're talking to, we have resources. There we are resources options. and there are steps that can be taken. So there, there is a process through, if you, again, too, if you go to the state of New Jersey, Department of Special Education, there is the parental rights in special education, which has forms towards the back of the book that you can fill out and send in. It depends on what the problem or issue is. So, um, there are remedies and you can't demand and it has to be factual backed up by that paper trail so that's important now probably in september um i will be doing a workshop for span on being organized and i go through that organization process um it's very short sweet I, I do it to this day. Everything on my son is at a, is at a touch um, so that I can grab his papers and go, but it's organized. It's ready. I took my husband yesterday to a, to a new doctor. All the papers are in his filing section. Everybody has their own section and those papers were easy to grab so that I didn't have to go looking through anything. Oh, Thank you, my special delivery guy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so um, 
it, by being war. Okay. So by being organized to the best of your ability, it's good every school year is to start fresh with your documents, with your IEP. Um, so that leads me to one of the other things that we do is we do workshops. We work with parents and professionals with workshops, more so the parents, to teach you how to read the IEP, um, to what questions you can ask for, um, how long your, the services are for. So if a child, say for instance, is taken out of a class for resource, um, at the time that math is being done in the regular ed class and your child goes to the resource room and then comes back earlier and they and the regular typical class hasn't finished the math assignment, your child's losing valuable educational minutes, which do add up to hours over a school year. So these are things that we can also guide you in, in addressing. Um, if your child is not receiving speech, as indicated by their IEP, we can address those issues. So we can redress, address the transportation. Um, there are processes for everything. If your child, um, I'm working with a family where transportation was not set up for the, for the families for extended school year. So there are processes to do that too for reporting to the state. And the, um, the important thing is, is to, before you, you leap, is think, you can always call us. Holly will put our phone number in the chat box and our email and our homepage is, we're getting it back up to speed. Our webpage is almost up to speed. We're working on it. Um, and that's www.ascfamily.com. Org. And I'm going to jump in too and say, Julie, you guys uh, do a fantastic email on a pretty regular basis. I love the resources that you list. You have articles, you have tips, you have support groups. Now, can just anyone get on your list to receive that? They sure can. Okay. So, and how would they do that? Would they go to your they, website and sign up? Um, no, it's not working correctly right now. Okay. So okay. they can, they can, you can send me an email okay. and it's, um, the email is J U L I E dot a S C family at hotmail.com. And I'm put, okay. I'm sorry. Holly. Say, I'm gonna put, I'll put that in the chat, but I mean, they can email you for that. And I'll also uh, send it in the follow-up email, but I would really encourage anybody who's interested because I'm always um, pleasantly uh, excited by what's going on as far as you, you do things with um, that your organization is doing, but I know that you list support groups, for instance, you list our support group for, which I'll do a plug for the uh, mom squad, which meets Thursday nights um, is a really wonderful um group of parents that come together and just talk about the different challenges and, and celebrate the things to be celebrated. Right, Julie? I mean, I think Correct. Um, I'm going to emphasize too, I'll, I'll, pull, I'll, I'll call Julie out here. Even when you've been doing it for a long time, and even when you're in a position of helping other people, there is such a benefit to participating in a support group when you can talk to other people who are walking a similar walk, like who, who uh, can understand when you're excited by a, what might be seen as a small victory in another parent's eyes. You know, we have to celebrate the small, like Julie said, you know, put the emphasis on the positive. So um, I am going to, I'll put that information in the chat, but please, I encourage you to check it out because you really do a wonderful job with that, Julie. I, I think there's great information in that on a regular basis. I don't know how often that comes out. Is it monthly? It was weekly. It was weekly. So, but the executive director, her name is Angela Abdul. She um, writes the newsletter and eventually we will be able to get things onto the web page. The other piece to this too is that the statewide parent advocacy network span, um, they are full of trainings and information. So all you need to do is type in SPAN NJ, and that should bring you to the Statewide Parent Advocacy Network. They too, because they cover 
the state of New Jersey under a, an umbrella that is humongous. They have health specialists, they have special education, transition, they have all kinds of specialists. They also provide information in other languages. Um, they have ongoing trainings. So it's worth taking a look at their site um, their staff is large. They have um, parent consultants throughout the state of New Jersey. We're just, we're smaller because we're a small nonprofit that's been, as I said earlier, around for over 40 years. Um, so they are a wealth of information. There is also a public, there are a couple of publications I want to bring to your attention to. The state I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask you a question first, Julie. Is sure. the are the span trainings, are they typically um is there a charge for them or is there an out-of-pocket no. expense? No, there some they they would be listed on the services. Okay. Um if they and they also have conferences, they also wow. have youth outreach. They have some fantastic people who uh, are like octopuses. We we're we're <laughs> small but mighty, but we're not that octopus. But um, there's there's they have conferences. We used to have conferences, but since we don't have a real home anymore, we will be looking for a place if we are funded, and that will be in in of course probably in the West Milford area. Um, so. It, it's full of information and you can overwhelm yourself. So don't don't try and do it all in one day in <laughs> any of these sites, because there there's so much. If you have a problem with having an IEP meeting with your district, when you go on to that state of New Jersey Department of Special Education, there's something called the facilitated IEP meeting. So that you can request a facilitated IEP meeting. You can click on that link and there's a brochure there that will talk to, uh, that will explain the information about the facilitated IEP meeting. So what they do is they have a state facilitator listen in when you're having the IEP meeting, interject if, if there's, it seems that there's going to be some kind of hostility or, um, or misinformation given, or, you know, they can help set the meeting to the right tone to, to have a successful outcome for the IEP without having to go to mediation or to due process. Now, I'm sorry, Julie, go so, back. How do you um, find this? How do you find this state facilitator? This is fascinating. Uh, the state facilitator is hired by the state of New Jersey. So when you go on to state of New Jersey De um, Department of Special Education, it'll bring you to their web page. And as you scroll down, they have columns. Okay. And as you're facing your screen you, and you scroll down, it it's um, there's a link for facilitated IEPs. Wow, that's a wonderful tip. I will try and include that also in the in the follow up notes. That's I know really that great there's know. a lot, so you know, don't hesitate to reach out if if you need additional information. Also, there is if you have a child on the autism spectrum, or your child has disabilities, there's a publication put out by the state of New Jersey called Navigating the Maze, and you just have to type in NJ navigating the maze. And you wanna make sure that you have the correct search engine. This is a great guideline for services, for who can do evaluations. It describes the difference between the psychologist and the psychiatrist and the MD, who's who. And it's a wealth of information that discusses transition. It's not just for individuals on the autism spectrum, it's for, even though it's called navigating the maze for autism, it, it covers a lot of the disabilities. They have an expert and his name is, I think it's Patino. So his contact information, he's like another ombudsman to assist families and families have contacted him. I haven't talked to him in years, but, um, 
by knowing these resources, it helps you to become an educated consumer for your child. There is also a humongous publication put out. I don't know if it's every year. There, uh, it's called New Jersey Resources 2020-2021. And it's a comprehensive guide updated annually by the Division of Disability Services, DDS, details the programs and services the New Jersey Department of Human Services offers residents, caregivers, advocates, and individuals with disabilities statewide. It's a large document, but you can also observe, you can also look at it online. So those are just a couple of incredible resources that are available to New Jersey residents too. And if you can't find something, New Jersey also has 211 that you can call and they will help you search or find information and try and be as specific as you can. And years ago, we had a behaviorist coming into the home and a new service in the state of New Jersey called Mom to Mom was started. And this program has been around for now a number of years. They are a 24-7 hotline number if you need to speak to someone. So, um, so you can contact them, and I'll give you the number. It's 1-877-914-6662. And what they'll do is they'll do an intake see what it is that you're calling about. They have different levels of service. It's free. And they will match you up with someone for you to speak to. Julie, can you repeat the number one more time, please? Sure. The number is 1-877-914-6662. So what they offer are peer and clinical support Support services. If necessary, they do a clinical assessment. They have referrals and stress management. So again, this is a free service and th their professionals can determine if you need a higher level of service. So um, talking about free services, our services are free. Um, if you're not in one of the areas that we cover. So for instance, we cover in Sussex County, we cover Vernon and Newton. Um, we used to cover special education in Hamburg. We can still do that. That means that I would be able to go to a meeting with you. Um, there's no cost for that. And in Morse County, we um, cover Dover and Jefferson, and we have a new, uh, if we get this, this five-year grant, we'll have a new area, which I won't mention right now, but we don't turn anyone away. Our executive director doesn't believe in, in turning anyone away. I don't believe in it either. I feel that it's important to help whomever needs the guidance that we're able to provide. And our bilingual staff also have years of experience. So they are able to help you too. And we can tap into our social worker if something comes up. But, um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't hurt to reach out. It's your decision if you want to reach out and contact the various organizations that are here to help you. A lot of the organizations are in their own their own realm of services. But when you talk to an organization like Family Partners or Case Management CMOs or something like SCARC or the Family Success Centers that are in every county too, um, you find that there are, there are some great people that can give you the, the guidance, the directional signals, 
the signals that you might need to move forward instead of saying, oh, what am I going to do? Why is this happening to me? I don't understand. But it's always better to reach out and ask. You don't have to take our guidance. It's up to you. We do not tell you what to do. What we try to do is teach you how to advocate on your child or children's behalf. So basically, since COVID, it's been me um, handling a lot of families and the family situations with COVID, with virtual learning, with returning to school. So um, there is a new guideline for schools for reopening in September. So I go to a lot of trainings. I keep, try to keep up on all the latest information that I go to that same site that I mentioned about the Department of Special Education. I look at their memos out to the districts. Um, and I, I have gone on a lot of their uh, different uh, webs, uh, not websites, a lot of their different um, search engines. So I've read court cases, which is all public information. Um, that's how I found out about facilitated IEP meetings. So my curiosity, so instead of being that surface person, this is where my curiosity has come in. If I find something's important, of course, I'll print a copy of it. But um, it's, it's worth starting in baby steps to navigate these systems because even as your child ages out, whether it's at the age of 18 or if they continue on to 21, that you have knowledge of. And just bringing it back for a moment to your child aging out at 18, if your child um, is not prepared through special education at the age of 18, then what happens is your child is allowed to march in graduation services with their peers, if that's what you prefer, but they don't take their diploma. Nobody knows that they're going to go on to, to a continuing educational services or um, daily living skill services, job services until the age of 21. So now at this point, perform care is through the age of 21 and DDD, the Division of Developmental Disabilities, picks up in the adult realm of services. So if your child graduates at 18 and they're sitting at home and they're not, the school district didn't describe transition to you that they, you can call the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation Services. There are just so many different pieces to this humongous puzzle that your child will sit home until they're 21 waiting for DDD. So again, this is something I can walk you through or as we transition back to, we, we will be virtual for the rest of this year to um, have our other parent consultants come on board is that don't hesitate to reach out and even reach out to your peer partner from family partners. The family partners, the, the people who work for family partners, um, is, they're great resources. If they're not sure of something, they'll reach out to us and we share information because if we hide it, it's just more frustration. And that I'm afraid is, is why, you know, when you start asking for additional services, is that's why the districts don't want you to ask questions about what they can provide to your child. Um, another trick I learned, and I'm going to only be real brief on this, is when you're in services such as perform care or case management or family partners or even us, what services can you provide to my child is an important question to ask. It's an open-ended question that you might not think about. So by asking that open-ended question and they say, well, we have some funds for respite. Well, we might have some funds for therapeutic horseback riding. Well, we might have some funds for camp. Ask the question, what, 
What other services can you provide? So by my asking that question of my son's case management, he ended up taking a video course. He loves his video camera. And he took a virtual video course from someone who was actually a movie maker and a videographer. And he had his DSP worker sitting with him and he exceeded this gentleman's expectations. Um, my son thoroughly enjoyed the course. I, he asked a lot of intellectual questions, um, but I wouldn't have known unless I asked that question, what other services can you provide? So um, I don't know, do you have any questions? I mean, there's so much more, but, and I don't wanna overwhelm you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna remind folks to feel free to pop off mute, but uh, you know, Julie, one thing occurs to me, I mean, number one, ask questions, but also the importance of being proactive. Don't wait for the school to come to you with what needs to happen next. The parent really needs to be proactive in asking open-ended questions, number one. And number two, um, back to the support groups. You know, I'm a big fan of support groups, but I feel that anytime you put yourself around peers, who have who are also navigating these mazes of services that sometimes you can learn things just by hearing what other people have experienced or hearing what has worked or what hasn't worked. So that might lighten the load a little bit of, of all of these things we don't know is to kind of be in a circle of people that you will um, by osmosis, maybe you'll hear some of the other things that are going on because I, I appreciate, I hear you saying there's a lot of resources, but don't put too much pressure on yourself. But there, there are a lot of ways to kind of put yourself in a good situation to hear, right? And to learn yes, and to feel yes. comfortable to ask. I mean, it's really no apologies in the asking. I mean, um, no, it's, it's when it's threatening, when you're threatening or you're angry, that you're not going to get anywhere. And parents have shared with me that they've gone through their child's uh, school records and have found notes about how horrible the parent is mm. and it leads you into the wrong direction um a lot of people there i'm from the midwest i can't help it i had a great mom growing up um i had great parents growing up and we learned how to respect each other and how to treat other people so by biting our tongues and asking questions in a proactive way as holly mentioned is um, is that you can get more services with the honey than you can with, <laughs> with the fire. So um, I have had people from child study teams pull me aside and they'd say, thank you for being there. We can't talk to that parent. You know, you kept the parent calm. Um, I have pulled parents out of meetings because they started to get angry. So, or even directors of special service say, I'm so glad to see you. You know, maybe you can help us. So it's just the way I approach things and our staff approach situations without anger, with questioning and asking the open-ended questions and not being demanding. And it's hard. It's hard. We're in tough times and everything is in fast mode. So, um, you know, maybe take a nurtured heart approach. <laughs> Good and, plug, Julie, I like that. <laughs> and well, that, that's what I use is a nurtured heart approach to get that honey instead of the fire. So, well, I, um, and I think it's just so important. And I really, really appreciate um, your, your attitude and your posturing in this conversation, because we, we all care very much about our children and about them having every opportunity and every support that they're entitled to. And like you said, emotions can run high, in particular, if we feel our child is not getting either not being seen or treated as well as we would like, but there's a lot of things going on. We know schools are under a lot of pressure and COVID has added to all of that. And um, I just really, really appreciate your message of trying to ask a lot of questions. That's a strategy that will get a lot of answers and to put things in writing. I'm kind of recapping yes. here, Julie, put things in writing and don't have a really, really long email, have separate emails for separate issues. So it's easier for you to go back and track and, and find out what's going on. 
and really uh, know that there are a lot of resources out there, many of which I am going to send to you folks as far as publications, websites, um, and services. And also just, you know, don't be shy. Find find some either through a support group or a group at your school or in your neighborhood. Connect with other caregivers who have similar challenges or even who have, just have kids with challenges. It doesn't have to be exactly like yours because there's a lot to be gained from us on uh, giving ourselves the pat on the back that we deserve for asking the tough questions and for being patient and for paper trailing and for organizing our notebooks like Julie said we need to do and for taking a class or for, honestly, thank you for, for tuning in to this program. I mean, I know we all have things that we could be doing, but you're sitting here and taking an hour to listen to what I think was really a wealth of information, thank you, Julie Rykon, on, <laughs> on how to, um, as a parent, to feel empowered uh, that really fans our energy flames to keep um, advocating for our youth and to be partners, really to be partners with these educational programs because they may not always be forthcoming, but you know what, they're, they're in it to educate our children and sometimes our children are harder to figure out what they need and what the, the school can do. And we need to be partners at the table. Is that what I heard you say, Julie? Correct. And one other thing is take care of yourself, please because you're just as important. Um, have date night with your husband or your significant other. Try and carve out some time for you. Um, it's, it's all important. And Holly, thank you for giving me this opportunity um, to share information with parents. That's what we're here for. And it's something that I'm, I'm really pleased to be able to do. And again, there's just so much other information. So Holly, thank you. Well, thank you. And so I'm going to send a do Julie Rykon from uh, a very busy organization, the uh, Association for Special Children and Families. I will be sending out a copy of this presentation along with a lot of the numbers and resources that Julie shared and the poem um, that she mentioned, which is um, a really great uh Piece. I have one printed out and in my in my office. Um, so uh, thank you, Julie. Look for information to follow on us. Uh, on we have also we have a program tonight at the Mom Squad, which is a support group that we mentioned for um, uh, special needs moms, and we're doing a presentation on how to co-parent uh, if you are perhaps living in a different home uh, than the child's. Uh, father or mother. And we, I think what I've been told is there will be some wonderful tips because even if you are married and in the same home, sometimes moms and dads approach parenting differently. So it's a conversation just about how we can, again, work together as a team to bring resources to our children and to put the children first. That's often a difficult thing to do. So thank you as always for spending time with us today on Lunch and Learn for Family Partners of Morrison, Sussex County. Julie, thank you so much. Thank Everybody you. stay healthy. Take, Take care. care. Bye-bye.